guys, welcome back to the star. I'm out of practice. Hey guys, welcome back to the start of an almost weekly reading vlog. No, how do I start this vlog? What am I doing? How do I film videos? So I got back from Rome yesterday. So all of the content that has happened over the past week has all been pre-filmed. And today I'm going to be getting back into filming a little bit and filming a few videos. Because I've been in Rome for a week, I do have a pretty large stack of mail here that I will be needing to show you guys. But as I said, I'm getting back into filming today. So I will be doing separate unboxings for the Illum Crate and the Old Crate. By the time you see this vlog, all of that should have already gone up. And I'm also filming in my September book or TBR today which once again by the time this vlog goes out that should have already gone up as well so I will be opening a little bit of book mail for you guys but before that I will let you know what I'm currently reading and my reading plans for the week because this is the last stretch of the Newt's Magical Readathon as well so I'm currently reading something and I have a couple of things I would like to get wrapped up before the end of the month so for the book I'm currently reading I am 228 pages into Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo I've been reading this for a little while I know but my holiday kind of interrupted my reading of Six of Crows. I was buddy reading this with Jade from JD Ray Reads. We have been buddy reading the entire Grishaverse. However, I'm pretty sure that Jade will have finished by now and I went on holiday without finishing so... We're still working on this one. So if you don't know, Six of Crows is the fourth book in Lee Bardugo's Grishaverse and it is the first book of the Six of Crows duology. This one is set in an Amsterdam inspired setting. The Crows are based in Ketterdam and it follows six young criminals led by Kaz Brecker who are about to embark on a heist to retrieve a guy from a prison who has invented a drug that is very dangerous to Grisha. So this book is very diverse. It has a lot of representation in it. We have disability rep. There's also so fat rep, POC rep. We also have characters in here who are victims of sexual assault. Essentially every character has a pretty dark and pretty complex backstory and it is about their dynamics as a group as they are embarking on this heist. Now this is a very character driven book. I am almost halfway I want to say. I probably, yeah, I have like 20 pages or so so I'm halfway through this. Somebody's here and I don't appreciate it. So far we are just on our way to the heist so that aspect hasn't really kicked in. I do really like some of the characters in here. I know a lot of you guys really like Nina. I haven't really seen a lot of her yet but I do really like Kaz and I really like Inej. I don't like Matthias at all. I thought that every character in this was one that everybody really loved. Not a huge fan of Matthias and I don't really know anything about Jesper but I do think that Wylan is super cute. The one thing I will say about this is that I know there is a lot of talk on booktube about how we kind of need a new adult category for fantasy books that are about characters who are in the late teens like 18 to 25 ish this book makes me definitely agree with that because in young adult we kind of have the true young adult and then we have the older young adult which is a separate category of books that should be new adult but new adult books don't do well in publishing who the fuck is here shouting in the kitchen so my one issue with this book and it's not an issue it's not a problem with my enjoyment or anything and it's not really a criticism of the actual book it's just kind of a criticism of the publishing industry. This book should not be young adult. These characters do not behave like 17 year olds. They behave like 25 year olds. In my head, Kaz Brecker is at least in his mid 20s and his character suits that. But for the sake of it being put in young adult, he's 17 when it's just not realistic and it's kind of the same for most of the crows when i'm reading it at the moment wyland seems the youngest of them in the way that he acts and the way that he behaves but he is also from a very different background so my kind of only thing i have to say about six of crows is that this should be an adult book and i also think that that is a reason why people who have read this first and then go back and read the grisha series don't like it because the Grisha trilogy is young adult. This should not be young adult. It should be marketed for a slightly older audience. So I think that this book has been done a disservice by being in the young adult category. And I also think that it does the Grisha trilogy a disservice because people are comparing them as they are set in the same world by the same author, but they are not aimed at the same age group. With them both being placed in young adult you would think that they are but with the themes and the characters the Grisha trilogy is very much true young adult 
and this, in my personal opinion, should not be in the young adult section. It should have been written and aged up. And then that makes me kind of sad because I feel like this would be even better if it had have been able to be placed in the correct age category or if in the publishing industry we did have a new adult fantasy market. So that's how I feel about this so far. I want to have this finished by the end of the month. I also would like to have The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein finished by the end of the month. I have not started this yet but it is less than 300 pages and the font is not very small so I'm pretty confident that I can do that. The reason I would like to read this one is that this was my punishment book for not completing July's Bacopoli. I did remove the punishment option for August as I knew that I wouldn't be around and I had like quite a few books to catch up on so I gave myself a rest month but this book is more tied to July Bacopoli and it is the first time I have ever had to have a punishment so I feel like I have to at least read this one. So these two are my priority for the last four days of the month and if I get through these I will be starting God's Grave but let's just leave that for if we get to it because at the moment I have like 500 pages to read just here. I should also probably mention that this one was on my Bacopoli TBR to read a young adult fantasy and then for the Newt's Magical Readathon these are the exceeding expectations and outstanding prompts for care of magical creatures and the prompt for that is to read a book under 300 pages, I think, and read a book with a bird on the cover. So now that I've caught you up on where I'm up to with my reading, let's open some book mail. Now, I have no idea what this is. I could have pre-ordered something and forgot. That doesn't happen very often, but it is possible. And it's an Amazon package, so no idea what's in this. But this one, I think I know what this is. So my friend, the wonderful and the lovely Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction, messaged me just before I went on holiday and said, do you or any of your UK booktube friends like Lainey Taylor? And I was like, yeah, I'm actually a massive Lainey Taylor fangirl. I have all of the out of print editions of all of her books. Fun fact, the only physical arc that I have ever received, to this day I have still only ever received one physical arc and that was Muse of Nightmares. So Ashley said that she was unhauling a book because while she enjoyed the book, she's happy to just have the standard paperback and she offered it to me and I'm a little bit shook. This is like, this is a collection completer, guys. It's a collection completer. The one thing that I don't have to make all of my sets match. <laughs> I'm shook. I'm shook that she offered it to me. I'm shook that she just gave this away because I'm pretty sure she could have put this on Arcs for Trade with just like, ooh, I got a card too, as like a unicorn. So. We have a card, which I may or may not read to you, depends what it says, but Ashley has so kindly sent me an arc of Strange the Dreamer. An arc of Strange the Dreamer, guys. This is one of my personal unicorns. I did read Strange the Dreamer late, so there was no possibility of me getting an arc copy for it, and I do have, I'll get the Muse of Nightmares one. So here is my Muse arc and the Strange the Dreamer ones, and he just they look beautiful together. I obviously never thought I would have an art copy. I'm not really somebody who would go on arcs to trade. I have no arcs to trade anyway, but I wouldn't really trade anything for old arcs, especially when I have the UK hardback of this. So I already have like the rare edition, but this is just, it's a complexion completer. It's a complexion. It's a collection completer because currently I have three copies of Muse of Nightmares and this was the copy that I was missing to have three copies of Stories the Dreamer and it's just, it's literally beautiful so beautiful oh end pages wow they're really pretty so thank you so much Ashley for sending this to me and completing my Lainey Taylor collection one day I will have a shelf exclusively dedicated to Lainey Taylor and you can bet that this will have a prize place prize position I feel like there's a say in there and I'm not quite grasping it but anyway I will cherish this forever because it is beautiful Thank you. So now I'll read the card and decide whether I'm reading it to you. Okay, I can I can read it to you. It says, Becca, I always feel the need to write a note with parcels, so excuse me while I gush for a moment, but hi, hello, very glad we started talking more lately because I've basically been a fangirl of your videos for the longest time. Now I've infiltrated behind the scenes and she's drawn a little evil face. No, but really very glad this one will find a new home with someone amazing who will love and appreciate it more than I will. And I loved it a lot. So that's saying something. Now go and read the rest of the Lady Taylor books, damn it. Yes, I do need to read the uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I have the out of print UK hardbacks of those. I asked her is to buy them for I think Christmas last year or our anniversary. And I need to read those yet. Yeah. But I just want to show you the um, little <coughs> drawings on the side. So we have a snake for Slytherin. She wrote never flinch, never fear, never forget, which is like the 
Nevernight tagline, which is one of my favourite books. This card is pure chaos, enjoy, with a little vine and a love from Ashley. So once again, thank you so much Ashley for the arc and also the chaotic card. So now for the mystery parcel. Literally have no idea what this is. My dad told me when I got home yesterday that it arrived yesterday. So like I said, absolutely no idea. Oh my god, oh no, right, okay. So <laughs> Let me find the note for this. This is from Mara Dunn and it says, Hi Becca, one day a few weeks ago I found myself watching loads of your videos. You've helped me get back into reading as I had been in a bad slump with nothing interesting me, but your reckon recommendations are great. Enjoy from Mara. And Mara, Mara has bought me Obsidio by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman and I just bought this in Rome. And now I feel really bad about it. Oh, uh, to be fair, I know that I'm 100% going to absolutely adore this book because I've given both Illuminate and Gemini five stars. So I'm still really grateful to have another copy of it because when I was reading Illuminate or Gemini, I think it was both of them, I really wanted to annotate them. And I was like, you know what? I can't annotate them because they're really nice mixed media like glossy editions but now that i have two copies of obsidio i can annotate one which is really exciting so thank you so much mora for buying me <laughs> obsidio i even i took it off my wish list when i was in the shop i clicked on it and normally if you click on add to basket in your amazon wish list it tells you if somebody has just bought it you so i always do that if i'm going to buy a book on my wish list because then it will tell me if somebody's already purchased it and it hasn't told me that yet so i did that and it told me that nobody had bought it but apparently mora you had purchased of studio for me so thank you thank you very much for this i will still cherish it forever i'm working on having a full j christoph shelf as well as a lady taylor shelf so this will still have pride of place on my shelves and i am always always happy like more than happy to have multiple copies of books by authors that i really really love so once again thank you so much mora for obsidio kind of kicking myself because i picked it up in rome but you can bet that i will cherish this regardless so i think that's about it for this update like i said i do have a few Few videos to film. I'm also going to be doing some bookshelf reorganization. I wanted to do it tonight, not sure if I'll have time. Oh, hiccups. I wanted to do it tonight, but I'm not sure if I will have time. But essentially, there will be a situation coming soon where I will be getting more shelves or having more space for books. But at the minute, I have a couple of stacks of books on my floor and I've already been through all of my shelves and decided what I want to unhaul. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily box up some books. An example of the ones I will be boxing up are things like Beautiful Creatures, which were the first books that I ever bought from Waterstone. So I don't want to unhaul them, but I read them so long ago that I don't remember a lot and I never talk about them on my channel. So I'm going to be pulling things like that off my shelves, putting them temporarily in a box for like a month or two and trying to get all of the books that are in stacks up onto the shelves because it's it's annoying me like I can see it all the time the stacks of books that are on the floor it's really getting to me so I'll probably do some like reorganization stuff in this vlog if I do I actually manage to get that done anytime throughout the rest of this week but that's all I has for you now so I'm going to go and film some videos and I will check in with you if anything exciting happens or when I've made some more progress in Six of Crows okay so I'm just checking in to let you know that I'm starting that organization I was talking about if you can hear banging Curtis is restringing his guitar but um I'm just popping in before I start because I don't know how much footage I'm gonna get I did do a video once that was like reorganizing my bookshelves but everything in this room at the minute is just so much chaos that I'm not gonna do a full video on it I'll just put a little bit in this vlog but I just wanted to show you before I start the stacks of books on the floor that I need to get on the shelves They're like the reason that I'm doing this so these are all my stacks on the floor and then that's a stack of empty subscription boxes. I have condensed those down today because I would have ended up with five there. And then that one is my August TBR, I think. And then we just have like random ones everywhere. So the goal is to get all of those on the shelves and to pack up some of these. So I'm going to be packing up Beautiful Creatures. We'll also be packing up the looks. Maybe Mortal Instruments and... Infernal devices because I don't plan on rereading those anytime soon and I don't talk about Cassandra Clare very often because you know how I feel about Cassandra Clare now. Not sure what we're doing. I am only going to do one box today and when that box is full I'm going to stop. So I'm going to get on and do some of that. 
and um, we'll see how it goes. I think we started something, gonna tell the world again. Oh, you're so beautiful. I just hey guys, it me. is Thursday now, and I just thought I would check in with you a little bit. I do have some more bookish mail but i'll start off with my reading update so i am on page 350 of six of crows so i have read 130 pages in like the last 24 hours i am seriously addicted to this now i could not put it down last night and i've read another chunk today i've only read like 30 pages today but i read over 100 pages last night i was real into it the part that i'm up to is now well into the heist and like i said i'm on page 350 and the way that people talk about this book is like nothing happens until page 450 so I was a little bit surprised when we actually got the plot moving and got the heist moving because I know a lot of people who have reviewed this book and said people say it's about a heist but the heist never happens and to be fair it started not too far after halfway. I don't know whether I'm just used to reading really big books so I'm used to a slow burn and a long haul. The chapters that I've just been through as well we are getting what is happening in real time as well as some of the characters backstory. We found out a little bit more about why Kaz is the way that he is. If you didn't know aside from his disability he also doesn't like to touch people and we found out why that is. We got a little bit of Inej and how Inej was sold into slavery. I also not long ago read Nina and Matthias's backstory and how everything went down with them so I'm definitely enjoying learning about each character and honestly these characters are quite complex so I would be happy to read like just a 300 page book from each character's perspective just detailing how they got up to this point so I'm definitely enjoying the characters in this I can't say yet whether it will be a five star but I can say that I am very much enjoying it so I think I told you yesterday that today was going to be my first day back at work and so I also picked up my mail this was sent to the address that's in my description box not a lot gets sent there and i have no idea what this is because of it obviously if i do receive things it does tend to be through my amazon wish list which gets delivered to my house and obviously when they arrive i know it's something off my wish list because it's from amazon i have no idea what this is at all so honestly i picked this up this morning i've had this with me all day i didn't take my camera to work so i couldn't do an update on my lunch or anything and i'm desperate to know what's inside this package so let's see what we got okay so it's in another envelope inside this one. So this is actually my first unsolicited book so I feel like I've made it now but this is called Battleground by Rachel Churcher. I do have a letter here and it is by the author so the author of this book has sent this to me and it also says on the back that this is book one of the battleground series there are one two three four five books i don't know whether that is the full series or whether there will be more but this one is book one which is always a good place to start so it says becca here's book one of my post brexit why a dystopia which is scary because um i don't know if you know this about me but one of the scariest films i have ever seen is the day after tomorrow um, post-apocalyptic things kind of scare me if they are a little bit too realistic like that one is about climate change and tsunamis and things like that and storms and this is about what might happen when we leave the EU which happens in one month two months so it might be a little bit close to the bone but we'll see it also says I hope you enjoy it and if you can mention it or review it on your YouTube channel that would be amazing so here is me mentioning it I won't read the rest of what I have to you because this is like a press release kind of really long synopsis but I will read you the back of the book which says 16 year old Bex Elman has been drafted into an army she doesn't support and a cause she doesn't believe in her plan is to keep her head down and keep herself and her friends safe until she witnesses an atrocity she can't ignore and a government conspiracy that threatens lives all over the UK. With her loyalties challenged, Bex must decide who to fight for and who to leave behind. The Battleground series is a set is set in a dystopian near future UK after Brexit and also after Scottish independence. So you guys know I do love me my dystopia. This is around 230 pages so it's not super long. Because I love dystopia there is a very big chance that I may read this at some point. However, like I said, I'm scared of movies like The Day After Tomorrow, dystopia that's like real close to the bone, as in like very well may happen as opposed to possibly could happen, is um, a little bit scary for me. Another example is Have I Live Now by Meg Rosoff. I gave that book four stars because objectively it was not bad, but I really did not like that book because of the way it made me feel, which is obviously the intention, but that is why I rated it high, even though I really don't like that book because it had its desired effect, you know? It scared the shit out of me. 
me and I feel like this one is going to as well. <laughs> so thank you very much Rachel Churcher for sending this my way. So I'm gonna head off now because I am on my way out. I'm going to an open mic night to watch or hear, what's the correct term? To hear Kotete sing. You know Kotete. Kotete. He's there, you can't see him. There he is. Staying out of the way. So I'm gonna head out and do that. We are on around 7.30 now. I should be back hopefully at around 11.30 if he does not dawdle. Are you gonna dawdle? So I'm gonna head out and I will catch up with you guys a little bit later on. So apologies for the lighting. I wasn't gonna check in today. But I have 30, less than 30 pages left of Six of Crows. And I've been reading this and I've been really enjoying it and I'm really absorbed and I do like all the characters. But I was like, I'm gonna end up giving this four stars. But then I gave all the Grisha books four stars and they're not comparable. Like Six of Crows is better, I enjoy it more. But I just wasn't getting that five star feeling, you know. And then I read a bit in chapter 42 and guys I'm gonna tell you the quote but I'm gonna omit the character names it's like a really popular quote so you probably know what I'm talking about but I will omit the character names so no spoilers but I read the bit that says I will have you without armor or not at all and I just I gushed <sighs> I'm real into it now guys, I'm real into it and I have no idea where Crooked Kingdom's gonna go. So I'm gonna go finish my last 30 pages of this. I will probably check in with you tomorrow with my thoughts because it is almost midnight. But yeah, my feels, my feels. So I'm back again, I'm really sorry. I have 16 pages left now, but I just found out, no spoilers, but I found out the reason why Wyland doesn't talk to his dad, like why they fell out. <sighs> God. It hurts. Hey guys, so last night when I checked in with you, <laughs> sporadically, I was just finishing up Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I have finished this now. I did finish it last night before I went to bed. It is around 6 p.m. now, but I have been out all day. I had a bank appointment, but I had two back to back, so I've basically been in the bank all day. And I came home and made some candles, and I'm just getting around to checking in with you now. So I did finish Six of Crows last night. I gave it five stars. It would probably be more around a 4.5 for a lot of this. I just, I didn't feel emotionally invested until we got to those bits that I was talking to you about last night. I do like all of the characters and I like what's going on there. I think that there is a great deal of complexity in here. I think that the characters are very complex as I said to you the other day, when I said I would happily just read several books just based on the characters' backstories. So I definitely think that the characters is where the beauty of this story lies, but obviously you guys know that I have been introducing this as a character-driven story anyway, because even I was aware of that. I'm just gonna talk a little bit more on the rep in this, because I think the other day I said it had POC rep, victims of sexual assault, disability rep, there's also addiction rep, there's mental health rep. Kaz has a lot going on with the things that made him the way that he is. I don't want to diagnose him with me being unsure of what exactly is going on with him, but there is mental health rep there. There's also learning disability rep in here. So pretty much representation for everything that you can think of. As I said, I give this 4.5. I did really enjoy it. I just didn't feel like in my gut, it didn't feel like a five star up until the last bit. So I suppose technically you could say that I'm giving this a 4.5, but but it is marked as five on Goodreads. I'm kind of classing it as a five star read. There was just a tiny little thing missing. I can't even say for sure what it was, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought that the plot was strong, although I did feel that towards the end, everything kind of happened at once. And then the further we got to the end, it was just one thing after another, after another. Like everything starts falling apart and then it gets fixed and it falls apart again. And then everything's just going wrong. But something else that I did really enjoy about this, aside from obviously the characters and the relationships between them, it's still related to the characters, but just the sense of hopelessness in this. These are all characters that come from a troubled background. The only one that doesn't come from a pretty traumatic path is Wylan. And he has his own issues with his father and why he sort of run away from the lifestyle that he had. So there are even things going on there, but there is also 
a lot of hope in this and not necessarily in the narrative it's kind of like between the lines we have nina and anej where nina is incredibly hopeful and she does tend to look on the bright side of life and anej is driven by a great deal of purpose but then we juxtapose that with characters like kaz who don't think of themselves as anything but monstrous kaz knows that he's a horrible person and it's intentional this facade or this person that he's made himself become is intentional but even he has hope there are things going on that are sort of outside of his immediate consciousness that are contributing to him being hopeful for things so mainly Kaz is driven by greed those are his sort of constant justifications for what he's doing and his motivations but then there are other things going on with him there's also a lot of great character development with Matthias and his realization of his background and that maybe he didn't have the healthiest upbringing and broadening his horizons and opening his mind to other things oh also there is LGBT rep in here. It's kind of, I'm not going to say it's vague. It's definitely there, but it's not super present in this, but I think it will be a lot more present in Crooked Kingdom. So just before I forget, there is LGBTQ rep in here as well. But Jesper, I'm finding it hard to find his motivations. He struggles with addiction. Like, you know, from pretty early on that he has a gambling addiction. What is it, Rosie? Oh, here we go. Oh, there you go. Yes. Yes, little baby. Okay. You stay there. So he has amassed quite a bit of debt because of his gambling addictions, but then I don't really know what his end game is. Like, I don't know what he wants for his future. Ooh, I guess we'll just sit like this now. So definitely enjoyed this. Glad I'm ready. I'm not really all that sad that it took me so long to read it because while it has been a big butchy book for a long time, I still enjoyed it now. So I have ordered the Crooked Kingdom Collector's Edition and I will also be getting the Six of Crows Collector's Edition as well just so they both match because I did enjoy it enough to kind of purchase those and the Collector's Edition has literally just been released. So today is the last day of the Newt's Magical Readathon and this was supposed to be my outstanding prompt for Care of Magical Creatures but I have yet to read my Acceptable or Exceed No Expectations prompt so I am going to go back through these subjects and see where I can add this in later because I have started the Exceeding Expectations book but I will 100% not get a chance to also read the acceptable prompt today. So I did start after I'd finished Six of Crows The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. This one is my Exceeding Expectations for Care of Magical Creatures and for August Bukopoli this one was to read a young adult fantasy I keep forgetting to say and this one was my punishment book for not finishing my July TBR. So I am 40 pages into this now so I've read a sizable chunk I guess and this is a young adult retelling of Frankenstein from the perspective of Elizabeth Frankenstein who I do believe is mentioned very briefly in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein which I have read but when I was 15 it was one of my GCSE English books so I don't really remember a lot about it but I do know that I did enjoy it. Can we just, can we just take a moment to appreciate this? This is cute, I need to take a picture. Okay, so now I'm done taking um, photos with Rosie. I have no idea what I was saying, but I believe it was about this. So this is from the perspective of Elizabeth Frankenstein, who was taken from, I'm not sure what her exact backstory is at this point, but essentially she had a caregiver who wasn't her parent and this caregiver was very abusive to her. I think her parents had died or her father was imprisoned. Her mother died in childbirth and she's actually from a highborn family but she's ended up with this woman who's horrible. And Victor Frankenstein's mother comes looking for a companion for Victor. So they take on Elizabeth and Elizabeth's purpose is essentially to make Victor less harsh. Obviously we know what happens with Victor Frankenstein. He creates Frankenstein's monster and the whole sort of message in Mary Shelley Frankenstein is that monsters are not obvious I guess because Victor Frankenstein is more monstrous than his monster Frankenstein. You know, you know what I'm trying to say here, you know what I'm talking about. So at the point that we start this narrative it's told interestingly it is in a historical fiction kind of style. I can't say whether it's reminiscent of Mary Shelley's writing because as I said it has been a long time since I read Frankenstein but it's historical fiction type of writing and we are following Elizabeth and her friend Justine who is also a what they called governess for the Frankensteins and looks after the younger two Frankenstein children and Elizabeth and Justine are on their way to see Victor who has gone to university but he left two years ago. In the entirety of those two years he's written four letters to Elizabeth and then he's just kind of disappeared. I believe that Victor had a friend called Henry who then went to look for Victor 
and he seems to have sent a letter to Elizabeth that I don't know what it is because she won't disclose it but she isn't happy about it. So her and Justine have gone to find Victor because they haven't seen him in a long time. Now Elizabeth as a female is not allowed to go to school or university so her entire purpose in life is to look after Victor and be Victor's companion and now that Victor has essentially ghosted her she's kind of worried. She does seem to love him, she does seem to care about him but her main motive is that she doesn't want to be useless to the Frankenstein family because then she feels like she will be cast out if she has served her purpose and Victor doesn't need her anymore. So that's the main narrative but then we also have a flashback of various times in Elizabeth's childhood and her experiences with Victor and it's weird because I thought that this book was about Elizabeth not really liking Victor and sort of doing what she had to do to survive and not get thrown out and essentially just putting up with Victor because he a means to an end. He whoa the sun is like freaking out because essentially for her he is a means to an end. He keeps her in a life of reasonable luxury and all she has to do is be his companion or whatever. But she does seem to care about him. In the flashbacks it seems that she is omitting terrible things that Victor has done. For example in the I think it's the first chapter we experience a flashback where she's talking about the first time she met Victor where she asked him if he wanted her to show him a bird's nest. So she climbed up a tree and brought it down and Victor picked up an egg and said that you could see the baby bird inside and then it kind of cut off and Elizabeth alludes to the fact that that isn't the whole story and something else happened but she doesn't say what happened. I'm assuming that Victor killed the birds but it doesn't say so she does seem to be protecting him. I'm not sure whether she's deluded herself to his true nature to make things easier on herself or whether she does actually care about him but essentially the main narrative is they're looking for Victor. I can't say I'm enjoying this too much so far. I just, I don't like historical fiction. So the classical slash historical writing style isn't really doing it for me right now. And at the minute, it just seems to be Justine and Elizabeth heading to go see somebody who might know where Victor is. They say they haven't seen Victor in a year and then they go and find somebody else who might know where Victor is, who then says, they haven't seen Victor in a year. But like I said, I am only 40 pages in, so I still have like 260 pages for this book to pick up. So I did want to finish this by tonight. It is unlikely, but I am definitely 100% hoping to get it done tomorrow. We do have quite a few things to do tomorrow, but my main thing that I have to do tonight is edit my Rome vlog because I haven't even started. I did import all the footage last night and I have 150 clips to edit, but I haven't started with the actual editing of this yet. I'll see if she'll sleep on my knee because I don't want to hold her up anymore. She's making me sweaty. And so the last thing I have to tell you is that as I went to the bank today, I was in the town where the good library is. So I did go in and I picked up a library book, even though I shouldn't have. I can't tell you too much about this, but the book is Stronger, Faster and More Beautiful by Arwen Ellis Dayton. I'm pretty sure that Rachel had an e arc of this and she really liked it. It is a sci fi, it is futuristic, and I believe it is about genetics. I think it was a while ago that Rich read it, but this follows six different people, and I think each person is further ahead in time. So we have one person who's in the not too distant future and the genetical modifications etc that they can have at this time point and then the last one is like really far in the future and we see like how far technology has advanced if that makes sense. Jay Kristoff has blurbed this it says a work of unforgettable vision and imagination so you know if Jay's name's on it then um I may enjoy it because I enjoy everything by Jay. So I'm definitely excited to get to this. You guys know I love me some sci-fi and as I said, Rich enjoyed it. Pretty much picked it up on her recommendation because I don't know anybody else who has read it. So that's all I got for you now. This was a longer update, but aren't they all? So I'm gonna go and make a start on my Rome vlog. It is 6.10ish, I'm gonna say it's 6.25, wow. I'm gonna go get on with editing my Rome vlog. I do wanna make some food soon at some point, so I'll probably edit a little bit, make food, I want to get at least halfway through this tonight and I will let you know how it all goes tomorrow. I will also let you know how I have reworked the nudes to fulfill as many challenges as possible and to actually get this book into the nudes instead of just floating around up there. So I will definitely be back tomorrow to let you know how I'm getting on with everything.
Hey guys, it is me, obviously, you're watching my vlog, who else would it be? I've come back to wrap up the vlog, fun fact, I got in the shower, got in bed, started reading and realised I'd never finished this vlog, so I'm going to get to that now. So today is the 1st of September, so the newts ended yesterday and I failed massively. I have reworked my subjects a little bit so that I could get six of crows in because obviously it was supposed to be the outstanding one for care of magical creatures. I'm not sure if I said yesterday but the subjects that I needed to achieve my career was a exceeded expectations in herbology and charms and an outstanding in care of magical creatures. So for the subjects I actually achieved a acceptable in herbology and that is all I did <laughs> for the subjects that I was supposed to but my final total comes up to I will go kind of in order of best to worst so I'll start with the subjects I have an outstanding in. I managed to fit six of crows in as the outstanding prompt for ancient runes which was to read a book that has been on your TBR for ages so I have an outstanding in both ancient runes and astronomy and then I have an acceptable in divination herbology and potions so i did i i passed nine exams um i have two outstandings and three acceptables if they were my a level results i would not be happy and i'm no jobless i can't be a magi zoologist i failed i failed my notes so i'm probably gonna go work at weasley's wizard wheezes weasley's olivander's no i can't work there I'm gonna go work at Honey Dukes. I'll go work at Honey Dukes. Wait it out a year and then I'll I'll do some resets next year. How about that? Does that sound good? So I kind of passed the notes but also kind of failed because I didn't achieve my career. As for reading, I have been reading The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. I'm on page 116 and I am so still bored like I told you yesterday that I was finding this pretty boring. Plot kind of moved on from where she was just going to random people and asking if they'd seen Victor but she's still just wandering around batshit crazy talking to strange people and asking them questions and I'm just I'm not about it it's historical because obviously it is a retelling of sorts of Frankenstein from the perspective of Elizabeth so it is in that style and it is set in that time period and I don't like historical fiction you know this I don't like anything that is set in a historical time period especially if it's like pre-1900 like the 20s onwards I'm, I'm okay with but anything sort of pre-1900 I'm just not really into and this is I'm not actually sure did it say what year it is is it like 1872 or something i did tweet and i said does this get any less boring and people pretty much said not really apparently after the halfway point some pretty exciting stuff starts happening and all of the good stuff happens at the end but it's still pretty boring so it's not looking good for me i wanted to have this finished today so that i could start god's grave sometime soon but this book is going to set me back for the entirety of september and um the white balance on my camera really doesn't like this book either hello <laughs> so that's what ouch <laughs> that's what i'm up to with this we'll be finishing it next week hopefully i don't want to start god's grave and read god's grave alongside it because then i will literally just never come back to this and i should because it was my punishment book but i'm just not I'm not into it. I'm really not into it. So I think that's it for this week's vlog. I don't have anything else to tell you. I posted my Rome vlog today. I'm not sure at the moment whether I'm going to get this vlog up on Tuesday or Thursday. I need to film another video that I was supposed to film today but I've been kind of busy getting like all the Rome vlogs sorted and also candle stuff etc. I want to film tomorrow and depending how much footage I have for this vlog I may edit it Tuesday night and have it go up Thursday instead. Next week I am going to see Jay Kristoff. I'm also going to be seeing Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. So stay tuned for all of that good stuff. Completely unprepared to go to Manchester. Haven't booked a hotel yet and they're all really expensive. So yay me. But as I said, that is it for this week's vlog. We will see what next week brings. Hopefully I can read a lot. Although probably not. I'm stressed. I'm getting stressed. I'm getting stressed about it. But please don't forget to like this vlog if you liked it. And subscribe if you want to. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> That was weird. Bye. Oh, we you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go where nobody knows. With guns sitting under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.